my voice is cracking. If I ain't feeling good, I give it to him. Because he created me to sing him, praise his name, hallelujah. And I give him everything I got, hallelujah. And it might make you feel, feel, you might be fearful. Oh, glory, hallelujah. I want to tell you something that I know you already know. You might feel like if you really, really go all out for Christ Jesus, that you're going to look foolish or that you're going to lose everything and that God is not going to perform his work. But I want you to look back in your life and everything that you gave, everything that you had to, did it give you the result you were looking for? I already know the answer, no. If you depended on people, if you set expectations on things, no, it did not give you the result and you gave everything. You gave them blood, sweat, and tears and they still turned their back on you. They still lied on you. They still wanted oil. And yet the one who showed you by his death and resurrection. I am the truth and the light and the way. You won't even give him a chance. You looking for a guarantee on earth where there is no guarantees. The only guarantee is when you get vulnerable and you get on your knees. And you tell God, you tell him everything that you have done, hallelujah. And you repent, hallelujah. Knowing he is going to make your sins just as white as snow. And you turn your back on what it was. And you look forward. And you let God lead you and guide you. And you don't question the spirit when it's telling you to do things. But I ain't talking about the demon in your mind. Yeah, you better question that. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And if you don't know you, if you don't know whether you got it or not, well then you ain't got it. Because everything in God is pure, true, and absolute. Hallelujah. It's the Wednesday Night Fellowship, and I praise God for the opportunity to come before you and let you know that God is real, hallelujah, and he still is in the blessing business. Ain't that right, Bishop? Amen. Come on, Bishop. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise oh, glory. God. Thank praise you, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because he first loved me. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm all sobby as you. Yeah. Do. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I tell you what. We thank you for that holiness. We thank you for this. This is what I do. Amen. I give God what's His because He owns my breath. Yes. He owns my heartbeat. Yes. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness there. All of it. All things that belong to God. Amen. All you ready? Oh, you yes. said, oh I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Bless your heart, bless your heart, bless your heart. Oh. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Here with today's gospel of Jesus Christ mm. to uplift your faith, to inspire you, and to un make you understand what truth really is, is the Bishop Johnny God bless you. Thank you, Randy. Father God, in the name of Jesus, let's go right into it. Father, we thank you now. Yes. We give you the praise. Father, we bow our heads, our hearts, our minds to you. Yes. We come before you, God, with our whole heart in our hand. Gracious Father, we ask that you would just be so mindful to remember the good work 
my dear wife, your daughter, has presented this evening. Mind, God, that she is offering herself. I ask you to bless her, God. Thank you, Lord. Bless that she would be even more of an inspiration. Thank you, Lord. To those that would hear, those that would believe, this and to those that will receive. I thank you for that great anointing and ministry in her. Yes. Keep her going, God, and you, God, use her according to your will. We love you, Jesus. We praise and we worship you, yes. Lord Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory. And God, we give you all the praises. Yes, Bishop. Father, we ask that you would bless the sick tonight. Yes. Miss Miley in Birmingham. Yes. Mr. Johnson in, in, in Mexico City. Thank you, Lord. Father, we ask that you would bless these people. Father, give them according to your divine purpose and your will. You said, God, in your word, you would heal. Be a healer tonight, God. And God, do according to what you said, not according to what I asked. I don't know, God, the condition, but you do, God. Yes. All I know, God, is you are there where they are. And you, God, can touch them. Please, God, tonight have mercy. Yes, hear us and help us, Lord. And hear us tonight, God, and please help us yes, to continue to do your will. Father, when we pray, as we ought to, always pray, we pray in no other name yes. than the holy, sacred name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ. And somebody ought to say, well, Bishop, you already amen. Know somebody ought to say, amen. I'm the amen Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise I got God. You. Praise God. Father God, we thank you. We thank y'all for tuning in and coming into this divine space and when all of our good work is counted we will yes. be right where we are tonight in the presence of a living god and for those of you who need to be reminded uh it is not so far that god can't reach you amen it is not so hard that he can't change you yes it is not so much that he can't love you yes it is not too far gone that god can't go where you are tell it bishop no matter what you've done, no matter what you said, yes, sir. no matter who you are, oh, yes, sir. our Lord and Savior can, he, listen, listen, God has a special blessing reserved for you. Yes, he does. I want you to understand that now because some of you are doubting because you have not seen the sun in a while. Yes. It's been dark in your world. It's been rainy and dreary. It's been cold. It's been wet. It, but Jesus will bring the sun. Yes, he will. And that sun will shine on you again. Thank you, Lord. I know that the world believes that it's ahead of you and ahead of the children of God. I know, God. I know, I know, I know. But let me, let me remind you all of something. We are not in competition with those that are non-believers of Jesus Christ. That's right. We're not in a race to see who's going to win. Hallelujah. We're not fighting something that we haven't already defeated. Hallelujah. For you know the battle is God. Thank you, Lord. The race is God. Yes, sir. Every challenge you have right now belongs to God. Tell it, Bishop. Turn yourself. Yes. Turn it over to, to the God. Lord. Yes, sir. He'll take them ashes. Yes. And he'll make them beautiful before yes, me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God is ready to bless you today because you deserve and need a blessing. It doesn't matter what the enemy stole. It doesn't matter what he lied or yes. said or whatever. God wants to bless you now. Yes, sir. I'm telling you what I know because your time is now. Your season is now. You are the right now ready person to receive what God has created in heaven before you was even born that yes. you would receive it. Today is that day if you would believe you can receive believe it. And God will ordain it to be so that you can believe Hallelujah. that he's yet still a good yes. God. Yes. Folks, why don't you try it? Yes. I'm telling I heard you my should. wife cry. I heard her pray. Yes. Why don't, don't you take trust Take a it? chance on God. Why don't you take that chance? Yes, why don't you sir. go on, on over to the other side where light shines all the time, where it's sun up 
And it's a blessing. In Christ Jesus. In our Lord and Savior Only Jesus in Christ, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You ought to not want that. I'm telling you. You ought not to want to be torn and pulled and dragged and beat and lied on and tripped and, and all this mistreatment. You ought to want somebody to love you. Amen, Bishop. You ought to want somebody Hallelujah. to be with you. You ought to want to have a smile on your face instead of a, a frown. Is you tired yet? You ought to want money in your pocket instead of always borrowing. Lord have you me. ought to want to be the lender sometimes. Yes, sir. You ought to want to own your own home instead yes. of renting somebody else. Tell it, Bishop. You ought to want to do everything God said he would do for somebody yes, else. Yes, he did. He, he will, will do, do it, it for you. you. Yes, sir. No Good respect night, person. folks. I'm telling you, Bishop. Good night. Hallelujah. That's the way we need to approach it. Yes. It's a good night in Christ Jesus. I tell you, no scarcity. Love God. him because he first loved you. Come on, Bishop. I want to tell you something tonight. Let me just say this and I'm going to have a seat. Us folks, and I know we got some white folks and Mexican folks and different people listen to this broadcast, Afghanistan's and whoever else. Us black folks, colored folks in America. The descendants of slaves My here son, in America. Our son called them the foundational black Americans. Yeah, the real ones. Yes. The one that came here yes. and built this country with yes, sweat, son. blood, and labor for no pay, no salary, got no income, and built the White House, built the railroads, built the bridges. We built the buildings that you call yours. And God never promised us that he would repay us Hallelujah. for the labor we disperse in this nation. Yes, sir. I want to tell you why I'm saying this. W.E. Du Bois, that great educator, early man of, of, he was the first PhD from Harvard University and Harriet Tubman, the underground railroad priest. Yes. These slaves, ex-slaves, believed that one day God was going to redeem his people. They never, according to what I read, they never charged God with the condition they was in. Hallelujah. But they talked to slaves, they talked to their family, and they said, listen here now. These are, these, these are the words coming from ex-slaves. Say, listen here now. We told them that if they believe in the God that master believed, that we also would be free because the master is free believing in Jesus. Hallelujah. How could we not be free believing in the same Jesus? Hallelujah. There's no respect of person. And they pushed that narrative upon their friends, relatives, and other slaves. And, 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 and this is what we're trying to get to tonight. They believed that one day we all would be free. They believed that they would be free even though they was in the grips of slavery, in the battles of an enemy, pressed down and oppressed by everything. They still believed that they yes, would be free. Yes, sir. Do you hear me tonight? He carried him, Bishop. Do you hear me tonight? You may be under the stress and burden of sickness. You may be under the stress and burden of poverty. Whatever has you in bondage, Hallelujah. you will be set free. Yes, sir. Believe God it. promised to set the captives free yes, he when did. he came here and they tell me that the captives were set free. Yes, sir. They tell me he set them free. There ain't no more Roman Caesar on the earth. You got that right. Which ruled Palestine. Ain't no more of that. Everybody can trust God. Amen, Everybody Bishop. can believe. He does deliver. You need no special invitation. Some of y'all want somebody to call you. You want somebody to reach out to you. You want somebody to tell you, say, listen here, listen here. Will you, why, how come God ain't told you my name? How come oh, God didn't oh, point oh, the oh, finger oh, Listen, oh, God got your number. Yes, sir. But you must believe in him. Yes. Tonight, I want to go a little further than I've ever been in the Bible. And I've been in the Bible, studied it day and night. I've read that New Testament over a hundred times. The Old Testament, not as many, but I've read it multiple times. Way past 60. But tonight, I read some scriptures God gave me to bring to you 
that it seemed like I've never read them before. Lord have mercy. And I got to bring that to you tonight. And when I take my seat, those of you that are listening to me, whether you listen tonight or 50 years from now, this here would be the liberation. This would be liberation for your soul because God has promised to do just that. You are in captivity if you're in sin. You are in captivity if somebody owns you. You are in captivity if you're not free to praise and worship God Hallelujah. with your own mind, body, and soul. Something got you captive. Hallelujah. You got to be set free. Let us go into the word oh, of God. Yes. Just the reverse would happen if I was in a church building with folks. I would ask you to stand. Lord. But since I'm in a studio yes. and cameras is in my face, and my wife is running that show. I'm going to ask you to have you take your seat. Yes, thank you, Bishop. While we bring you the truth, the sacred divine word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to bring to you tonight. Uh, we do have ourselves an opportunity to share with you what is holy. We do have that right here. And if you will, work with us. Give us a chance to show you what does say the Lord, and we'll do our very best. Amen. Okay, now, I want to make sure that I do this right. In the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, Bishop. That's good. In the book. <laughs> All right. All right, now. The book that Paul wrote to... Thessalonica, the people, the believers of Thessalonica, he, he, he wrote these passages of scripture and the book reads according to what Paul wrote. And if I pick it up where Paul made the distinction between faith, hope, and, 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 and the actual blessing that the people needed. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote it this way. All right. First, book of Thessalonians in the fourth chapter. All right. First book, Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Now, I have to read this this way because it is this way. I told you people believed in stuff and they was in captivity, but they believed. Yes. I, I, I don't want to beat that drum any louder because I'd be off beat. I'd be, I'd be way off the note and everything if I made it any louder than what it is because if you tell me you are not in captivity but you do not have the peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. The love that covers you when you ain't got no mother, no brother, no sister, no father to knock on your door when ain't no paycheck coming and nothing is in the refrigerator. If you ain't got the peace of God, you've got to be set free. God got to do it. Yes. And this is his method. Yes, sir. His word. He always worked through his word. And when he lay that word on you, he'll come see about that word. Yes, he will. Now, you may be bypassed in the street, but God going to go straight to wherever the word is. Yes, hallelujah. Because he is the word. Yes, sir. 1 <laughs> Thessalonians 4, and I preach and teach the way God gave it to me. Yes, sir. <laughs> I bet I can do that, the way he gave it to me. Yes, sir. All right, 1 uh, Thessalonians 4, and the 13th verse reads this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, yes. concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as the others which have no hope. Hallelujah. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, and even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Hallelujah. This is this is King James Virgin stuff, so it may sound like they back in the 16th century in England talking. But bear with it. And then he says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, mm -hmm. 
with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise. Hallelujah. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him and them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be Thank with the Lord. Thank you. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. With these words. So many a times uh, people that were without hope, people that didn't have faith, anymore because they had been in bondage. Their mothers was in bondage. Their grandfathers were slaves. Yes. And they never saw freedom anyway and hear somebody trying to tell them that one day yes. they will be free. Hallelujah. How do you believe that? How do you have hope when they take the O and the P and remove it? Lord have mercy. And all you got is he. He. That's all they had was the he that they kept preaching about because hope was gone out of the minds and the heart except God touched some little preachers, some little busy followers. Uh, listen here. Listen here now. Listen here. God will not allow you to not have faith. Hallelujah. You may not want it, but you're going to believe. Hallelujah. And, 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 and Maurice White of the Earth, Wind, and Fire would say, you will believe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll believe now because everything God will do will lead you into a state of reality that you cannot deny. Yes. That must have Bishop. been the hands of God. Yes, sir, Bishop. Say, all right, the boy born in a log cabin and he can't read or write. His father was a hellion, but he wanted to learn stuff, so he went off into another situation and learned from somebody else and he became a lawyer. Then he tried to be a politician and failed. Then he went and did it again and he made it. And then he had a passion in his heart to capture the country and be the leader of the group that should abolish slavery. Yes. He had that in his mind. I'm talking about Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Sir. And he believed that if God was with him, divine providence would cause this thing to be a reality, not just a dream. Yes. Do y'all hear me now? Everybody in history from your daddy to my daddy back had some kind of faith that one day they would be set free. Yes. I'm, I'm, you see, listen to me now. Paul is talking to people that were in, <laughs> that were in slavery. Yes, yes. You didn't hear me now. Thessalonica was a part of Judea and outside of the city in Odad next to Jerusalem. But it had some problem because Rome controlled every province. Yes, sir. And the Caesar was God, not just king. Lord, so they was in captivity. Hallelujah. Even though Paul had been anointed and called and was the last of the apostles to see the Jesus that we call our Savior. He said, I'm the least of all, but yet I saw him. Mm -hmm. He blinded me with his light. And tonight, there is hope in not just something somebody told you. Hallelujah. There is hope now in the world because God has promised to deliver you. Yes. To bring you out of the dark, deep places where the enemy has told, stolen your trust, stolen your faith, stolen your very nature of believing. So you now is turning to the world thinking that they're going to help you. Yes, and they... They never will. No. Sir. Because it's not their nature. That's right. It's yes. not part of what they do. Hallelujah. Here you go. Paul. I would have been careful listening to that man preach over there that said, said, send that letter over there to Thessalonica. I'd have been careful, but boy, you don't know what we're going through. <laughs> Martin Luther King stood out there in front of that, 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 that Lincoln thing out there and said, y'all got to believe one day we all going to be yes, free. Yes. I can see. I had a dream. 
and, and, and met Mahay and Jackson told him, tell the folks about the dream then. That's right. He done got prop up there. All the Muslims behind him and all these other sharecroppers and everybody, he don't know what to do. He's just going to talk to the world. And all of a sudden, this gospel, powerful woman of God yes, say, is. you tell them the dream, King. Put the paper down, put the speech down, and told him about the dream. He said, well, I had a dream. I had a dream. The dream is the hope of a race of people that we all will be set free. Hallelujah. The master and the slave will one day be friends. In other words, their children will marry and reproduce again. Won't be no bondage of no race. I got a dream. And he kept preaching out of his mind the words of, of liberation. Yes, sir. Paul is preaching to some people that one day, because I know somebody looked at him and said, was you over there, Paul, when they burned my uncle alive? Paul, was you over there when the lions had my son? Paul, was you over there when the Roman soldiers stabbed my husband? Paul, how are you going to tell me? And Paul says, listen what Paul said in the 15th verse. He said, for this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Even the dead in Christ got hope. Hallelujah. Even the dead in Christ will, will, will be blessed because of God's promise. Yes. Which is yeah, amen. So Paul is going somewhere with this. And then he's talking about, well, we're going to be caught up. And we're going to meet him in the sky. All right, so some say Paul just stole that from the, from the Acts, from the first. Paul had it in his heart that Jesus was coming back. Hallelujah. And they had no hope, y'all, for nothing but the words of God. They clinged on to him, held on to him with everything they had. In knowing that God was going to deliver them, Paul, Paul had to tell the truth. Yes. Thank Something you. about this Jesus, y'all. In the book of Acts, Paul had to tell the truth, all the truth, not just some of the truth. Every truth he had, he had to tell it because folks had lost all hope about everything. Yes. But Jesus had a witness. Yes, he did. Can I get a witness? I'm your witness, Bishop. <laughs> I'm your witness. <laughs> now, Jesus, uh, you look this here now. In the book of Acts, the first chapter. And it says in the fourth verse, and beginning, and being assembled to gather together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, yes. but wait yes. for the promise of the Father, which yes, sir. ye have heard of me. Yes, sir. Then he says, folks, John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Not many days hence. Now, I want to go somewhere from that passage. Come on, Bishop. In the 11th verse, it says this. Which also said, it starts out just like that. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heavens? Yes. This same Jesus, which is, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in the like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Yes. These were angels talking to people. And they convinced them that what you see now happening, because it was miraculous. Let's just be clear about it. Uh, Hughes, Howard Hughes hadn't built the mother goose yet. The American uh, military has not created the Mustang P Fighter 1 or whatever. Yes. No planes was flying, y'all. No helicopters, no, no, no right. nothing was able to elevate itself except the rock could throw up and come down. An arrow could shoot up and come down. Gravitation had taken over the world and nothing could even uh, defeat it. Nothing could fly. But they looked up and saw Jesus. Yes. Suspended in the air. Thank you, Lord. Flying without wings. Lord have mercy. And the folks said, what is this? And then he told them, said, don't you worry now. This is what you must do. 
But the Bible says that the instruction was, y'all believe in this. Yes. What you hear, what you see. Because one day, just like you see him go, no plane, no boat. See, that's why I get all these conspiracy theory people out of my life, out of my mind. Because Jesus ain't going to never come back on no, on no asteroid. There was nothing to accelerate him in the air. He stood there by his own power, his own might, and he let them see him. And then the angels told him, say, look here. Yeah. Just like you see it. The word. That's how he coming back. Yes. Paul then went over there in Thessalonica and promised these people, because some of them witnessed this event. Paul said, them folks that died, you keep crying for your cousin, your mother, your brother, your sister. And I want to tell you now, they will get the reward. Because God has promised this. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and some says around the 13th century that some bishop or pope or somebody started preaching and said, that's rapture. And they created in the term rapture from that passage of scripture in Thessalonica 4, 13 through 20. And he said, now God is going to rapture the church. Which means you'll be caught up in the air to meet him. Let's talk about the rapture. Do you know my mother and them would preach this all the time? Uh, I remember back in the 70s, 70s Catherine Kuhlman and all these folks be on the radio and uh, all these people be Shambach, all these folks from everywhere. Uh, Ernest, Angel, everybody be there. Jesus is coming back. They always would preach that. And, and the rapture is going, don't you be left. And oh boy, we went through the world on that. And the rapture's coming. Everybody preached the rapture. And then we got so far ahead of the rapture to where we started saying that, well, we didn't decide it. That he coming for sure, but it won't be uh, like they said. Now, when he come, uh, you know, of course, now, because people going to the moon, he'd have to have a ticket, you know. I mean, the plane got to land. And he got to be on first class. He got to be not in the back. He got to be where we all can see him because this is what the rapture is. And then when he get up there, he going to, you know, like hover, you know, hover to keep the motor running. And he, those that can fly, have money, have tickets, can go up there and meet him. <laughs> you know, the space station. Listen to me very carefully. Everybody believed in this, including the slaves, that that would happen. God would rapture his church. Paul is not saying that he's just going to rapture the believers, but those that are dead in Christ are going to be raised first. So even those that died that didn't get it will actually be able to receive it. Hallelujah. And for those of you that believe it's going to be some kind of private secret event and only the Christians are going to know it, that is the great craziest thing I ever heard. Because it sounds like Paul has said, heaven is going to open up. Hallelujah. Now wait a minute now, Rutledge. Well, I'm telling you what the Bible says. In the book of Acts, the men said that Jesus is coming back just like you see him. And if he was standing in the air by himself, suspended with the power of God, I guess he'll be doing it when he comes back. Yes, sir. And everybody in Jerusalem saw it. Yes, sir. Romans, uh, Ephesians, wherever you were, if you were there, you saw it. You saw Jesus that day. And now, he, Paul is telling them, he coming back. Hallelujah. Acts say he coming just like that. So the second coming of Christ, it won't be when you catch all the hell you can catch. Hallelujah. He's a deliverer and a promise keeper. So, yes, he freed my grandfather who was a slave. But I'm telling you now that he ain't just free him. He freed every seed that was in his body. Hallelujah. His grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, all the seeds for all eternity got free. Because, listen to me, I cannot allow no one to tell me I'm one-fifth of a man. Lord have mercy. You'll never get me to believe that I'm somebody else's property. Hallelujah. This Bible gives me the right to Thank be a man Lord. in the presence, a man in the presence. A man in the presence of any man that ever lived. Hallelujah. You got to know that Jesus freed us. 
He liberated us and he took all the bondage, all the chains, the shackles, and he broke them. We'll never be in nobody Hallelujah. else's bondage. Hallelujah. But that speaks to the rapture. God got to do what he said. So, brothers, if I don't make it, you will be caught up. You will return back to Jesus. Well, what about the scripture that says that after the body, after death comes the judgment? And, and you're in the presence of God. What about that scripture? All of this is done by a providence, a divine intervention you can't understand. Hallelujah. You want to know what kind of body I'm going to have in heaven. How long my hair going to be? Am I going to be short or tall? What my weight? God got it all where you will be blessed eternally. Hallelujah. Listen here to me now. Listen forever. Get this in your heart. There's, there's no tears. There's no pain. There's no death. There's no disappointment. There's no dissatisfaction in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you will forever be blessed and all that you are will be beautiful, more beautiful than diamonds and purples. Thank you, Jesus. Because you'll be walking on gold. Thank you, Father. The gate you got in front of you will be a solid pearl. So, man, that's just symbolic. No, 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 no. I want to make sure that's understood. These are words of the living God. Given, Hallelujah. Given to man to tell the man that God is real. And all you have to do is believe it. You may not understand it, but understanding will come once you say yes. yes and believe. Tell it, Bishop. And believe because the understanding, the understanding is guaranteed. Hallelujah. Your believing in him is not. That's right. That's a choice, hallelujah. You have the free will to say yes. Yes. And when you do, the Holy Spirit will make you understand. Hallelujah. Yes, that no do. man will have to teach you. Hallelujah. And you will be a graduate of the University of God. Hallelujah. And you will be blessed above all of nature. And nobody will be able to ever tell you you don't know. Hallelujah. Because in your face, it'll show you have the answer to every question ever asked. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus, divine, holy name. Hallelujah. That's how that works. Hallelujah. Let me tell you how I'm so sure about this capturing of the re, uh, 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 you know, when you, when you are raptured and, and, and Jesus recaptured his children and, and everybody dead and Christ going to, you know, be with him and all this stuff. Let me show you how, how this reads. Paul was nothing but a man that was saved and converted. He had two PhDs according to his learning and he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. But in some way, in the letter to the Romans, Paul wrote this passage of scripture and he wrote it because he believed that it was the right scripture to write. And when I read this, don't worry if it, if it makes you angry because Paul wrote this. In the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, Paul wrote these words. And Paul wrote them because it was Paul that was speaking. Yes. From a place I thought about this as my wife was praying and preaching and crying and prophesying and teaching this, this early in this message. Paul wrote 724, the book of Romans. He said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Hallelujah. I want to tell you, the reason why Paul wrote that is because Paul was accustomed of being a realist. A man that believed in what he read, what he saw, what was put in him, and what he had to absorb. He studied all the time, so he could not believe in Pharaoh of fables and lies and fantasies and whimsical ideas. Facts matter to Paul. Yes. And he said, who shall deliver me from this body of yes. this death? Paul was describing sin, wrapped all up in his own mind and soul. He kept crying out to the Lord, Lord, take this thing out of my sight. And, and, and everybody said, you know, Paul was a sick man. That's a lie. What do you mean, Rutledge? Well, if you are in Christ Jesus, he got to be in you. And if Christ Jesus is in you, not an ounce of sickness is in you. 
the body may feel what it feels, but God won't allow it to touch your soul. You got, the, you got the spirit of, of liberty because wherever you are, wherever you are in Christ, that's where the spirit of God is. And as long as the spirit of God is there, you are set free. Yes, sir. And Paul cried out, take this thing out of my side. Three times I consulted the Lord. And God told Paul, yeah. I got grace, boy. And that'll be good enough. Yes, sir. It's sufficient for you. That'll be good enough because you don't have to worry what you feel like, what you think. Yeah. You, see, see, God knew the mind of man because Adam had failed him. And he said, Paul, you may even be imagining this. Lord have mercy. No, Lord, three times I'm... You can ask me again. I'm going to tell you, boy, in that my presence, you are set free. You liberate it. You don't have no sickness. You don't have no illness. It is my will that you must do. Yes, for this glory, sir. for this glory, for this glory, Hallelujah. I must accomplish yes, by sir. you, Paul, being my witness. Yes, sir. So Paul described what he, what he saw, y'all, in the streets of Rome. Every now and then he would see a, 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 a Palestinian. I always had to be a Jew. Yeah. Never a Roman. Uh -huh. They were citizens to, to, to some kind of old crazy sinners. Death or something. And they humiliate the man and his family. Like they did with us slaves back in the 18th century here in America. Especially in Alabama. They would, they would lynch one of our folks. Lord, put him up on the tree on Main Street. Right next to the city hall. And wouldn't even take him down once he was dead. So that when we had to go to the store, we had to, they would make us march in front of that dead body and watch that man uh, lynched up there and, until we just vomit on ourselves. Yes. And they laughed and took pictures and, and made postcards of our relatives, our ancestors. Paul saw that in the streets. He saw in Jerusalem where the Romans would wrap another dead Jew to the body of a live man and tie him hand to hand, face to face, while the man was riding it and sneaking and making him walk around with a dead body. Lord have mercy. Paul said, that's what sin looked like Lord to me. Mercy. He said, Father, who can take this sin off of me? That's what Paul was describing. Now let's go back over there to Thessalonians. Oh. Paul want to tell you. Paul want to tell you how glorious this event is going to be. Because you done lost hope. You done lost faith. Paul will say God is coming back. He coming back for the believers. But those that died and believe, he coming back for them too. So Paul is saying, do y'all remember when the Romans conquered whoever they conquered? Do you know what they would do? They would take all the slaves from that nation. March them however many miles they had to go. And the soldiers would march them all the way up to a mile outside of the gates of Rome. Lord have mercy. And they would make them stand out there while the, the, while, 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 while the guy, the legion leader, would go into the city and tell them, we have a, uh, we got great slaves. We got great belly booty. We, 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 we got all the women. We got everything. And, 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 and we come back triumphantly. We got all of them out here. Paul knew that. And what Paul knew was that when the slaves of those Romans came, they was filthy, dirty, rotten, dying. Some of them had disease. And the Romans would make sure that they stayed a mile outside of Rome. And once the Senate says, well, all right then, how much, how many, how we, we'll get the city ready. So what they would do for two or three days, they would go around and put all this incense, myrrh, and all this great, they would make Jews go around and, and make the city smell so beautiful. Put all this stuff out in the streets. And then they would give a loud trumpet. Blow, rah, 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 rah. And every Roman in Rome knew it was time to bring the soldiers back into yes. the city of Rome triumphantly. And they would, they would build some magic ark and say, the, the, the triumph ark of this, this crowd. Triumph, they still got them there. These arcs that you see in Rome, triumph is what they are. They showed when they conquered people, there was the triumph, the victory is what they say. 
Yes. But I want to tell you, Paul saw all of that. And he said it was so glorious. The city smelled like roses and, and, and just beautiful, everything. And the soldiers came and all of the Roman citizens ran out and hugged and kissed the soldiers and gathered themselves with the soldiers and they marched with the soldiers into the city. Paul is saying that when Jesus comes, the dead will march with the living into the city. Hallelujah! He gonna raise them up from the grave. They gonna walk into glory with the living. That's what Paul is saying. That's all he knew. It's literal, y'all. See, the context is, Paul knew what he was talking about. We keep forgetting that God had purpose and a plan for his people. Yes. But Paul wants you to have hope that Jesus had not forgotten you. you. Yes, he got a plan for you too. Jesus ain't brother. forgot your sister. Jesus ain't forgot your brother. Yes. He got a plan and a purpose. Yes, sir. Tell it, Bishop. The Romans made it so beautiful. And they came in with all the, the boy blow the horn, everybody blow the horn. And all the people gathered and in, in, in the wrong city of Rome just was party, party. Everything was so glorious. Lord have mercy. And one, one writer, Caesar says, the purpose of the smell, because all them stinking slaves had to be put out on display in front of the Senate in the auditorium so they could pick them, take them, kill them, whatever they want to do. Put them in the air with the gladiators, whatever. But the smell was to hide the suffering of those people. Lord have mercy. But do y'all hear me? The rapture was always meant to be an illustration that God will not allow even the dead to suffer. You coming in. Yes. And you going into glory with God. And, it, and I love this part now. I love this part. And, and you go to New Orleans now, they still sing this song. This song is sung forever. Louis Armstrong. Pearl Bailey. Saints go marching in. When the saints go marching in. What a glorious time it will be. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the saints go marching in. Yes, sir. Do y'all hear me? The saints will be marching in. I want to make that clear. Some of us even doubt that God is coming back for his church. Some of us don't believe that anymore. So we're we willing to make enough money so we can get us a $250,000 ticket. And go with Tesla man up there to the moon. Mm. And get our own place up there. We can live out in this space. Jesus promised that he would return. The Bible said no, no, no man knows the hour of the day. But he promised that he would return. And you better get ready. Because he's coming back. For his loss. For his lost church. But the church will be perfected. So hear me clearly. Everybody is not crazy. Them folks kept praying and believing. One day, our Savior will set us free. How about if you didn't have no name? Lord have mercy. How about if you was born and they told you you was a number? How about even as a man, you could not even claim your own child as yours? How about it? When God said, Frederick Douglass, stand on the wall and don't get down. Hallelujah. Because the people must have faith and believe that one day they shall be set free. Hallelujah. I don't know if y'all know it or not, but freedom in America is still yet being worked on. Some of us are still living like slaves. We live like God has not liberated us because we either slaves to drugs, alcohol, uh, dope or something, slave to sex, slave to money. We slave to the world. We slaves. And Jesus has come to set all the slaves free. There was a man in the Bible called Philemon. His master wanted to keep him a slave. Paul said, listen, fella. Uh, 
Nenemus or whatever his name was, I have given you the right to be. I've been praying for you. You got your liberation. What you mean you keeping this man in slavery? So you see, I watched this very carefully. Back in the 18th century when slavery was at its highest point, before 1863, before 1865, before 1850, yes. there was a fellow running around teaching the plantation owners. Not only was black folks dumb and crazy and slaves, but they weren't even real human beings. And he was proving it in the Bible. So the Methodists and the teachers and all of those Southern uh, Democrats and everybody were saying, uh, uh, Josiah Priest, he's a, he's a better known preacher of all the South, all the Southern states. And all, they pay him great money. He come around and he teach them how the little knot in the back of a black man's head mean that he was a monkey and not a man. Lord have mercy. So he was God. teaching them wow. that in the Bible, God had ordained us out of Deuteronomy to forever be slaves. It was a preacher doing this. And he died a fool because that's what he was. But I want to share this with you tonight. The rapture of the church is inevitable. It's coming. Some of us believe that it's going to come according to Revelation. According to Revelation 3, According to Revelation 3 and 10, I think it is. Let me just make sure. Yeah, Revelation 3 and 10. I want to read this to you. Revelation 3 and the 10th verse. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. The Lord is telling, don't worry about what, the devil is going to do. How are you going to come? How are you going to try and destroy uh, those that believe? He said, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to take you away. As he spoke to the church of Philadelphia. He said, I'm going to take you away so that you won't be a witness of what the tribulation would be. So what is the tribulation? The tribulation is a time where great sorrow and horror. All this revelation talks about is tribulation. And the tribulation will be a place and a time where the church of God will not be here. Some say, well, we, we're going to be uh, three years and, you know, uh, and, and we're going to go through tribulation. And then Jesus is going to come back and then three more years. No! There will be no suffering. Hallelujah. There will be no more torment. And once the rapture happens, God is not going to allow his believers to go through no tribulation. So you want to know, well, when I meet the Antichrist, you already met him. <laughs> He's your local drug dealer. Lord have mercy, tell it, Bishop. He's that Republican that says that God is only on their side and everybody else is a lie. He's that Democrat that believes in same-sex marriage. He is a liar, and that's all he will ever be. And you don't want to worry about when you're going to meet him because you already met him. And he's been in the world since Paul and them day. And he's not going nowhere. But if you want to know about the Antichrist, don't get so concerned because rapture, you won't have to be a victim of his. Hallelujah. He's for his own kind, not yes, you. Sir. You as a church will be removed from the earth. There's three different types of people in this world that believe in this. One is the post-tribulation. After all the tribulation, the church will be raptured. That's a lie. Then the other one is the mid-tribulation. Well, during the tribulation, folks go, they'll catch hell. Then that's a lie. But the pre-tribulation is what the Bible is talking about Hallelujah. in Thessalonians uh, 4 and, and, and 13. God will rapture and snatch his church Thank up you, out of this Jesus. earth. That's what it means. He'll snatch you up out of here. Hallelujah. Meet you in the sky Hallelujah. and carry you to glory. Some, the, some of these preachers, some of these folks will say, well, that's a charlatan's perspective. No, that's the Bible's perspective. And don't you go so far to where you lose your salvation trying to be some hypocrite because you don't believe Jesus is coming back. Lord have mercy. I want to tell you as nice as I know how, every knee gonna bow. Yes, it is. Every tongue gonna confess. Yes, it will. The hour has come and now is 
for this message to be archived. I can't, I can't preach it no more. Hallelujah. You believe it, you receive it, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. Blood of you don't believe it, you don't receive it, yes, all hell awaits you. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I release this Jesus. word and all that I have preached Hallelujah. back to you. Let those that can hear have ears to hear. Let those have eyes to see. Bless those children, God, that need to be blessed. And it is done, Father, according to your word. But in your name of Jesus, I pray. And somebody ought to say amen. Well, Bishop, you already know I'm saying amen. Amen, then. And you know what? Yeah, amen. It's Wednesday night. <laughs> it's Wednesday night. It's Wednesday night, fellowship. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. We must have went over on the track in, didn't we? Pull the camera back. Come oh, on! Yeah, oh, yeah, it's oh, Wednesday yeah. night. It's Wednesday night. It's Wednesday night fellowship. Yeah, yeah. Not it's Wednesday me. night.